Hey everyone, today I will be reviewing episode 3 of Miss Marvel, and overall, this show continues to be an absolute delight. This is probably my second favorite episode after the first. Starting with the good stuff, this show has been incredibly consistent, which is really nice. Everything good about the previous episodes remains that way with this one. Starting with, I think it's Mira Menon's direction, it continues to be great. The show is definitely getting kind of less and less stylized as it goes on, but I honestly don't mind. For episode two, I felt like I was really feeling the lack of stylization and it was bumming me out a bit, but for some reason, I didn't feel that absence at all this episode. Um, I'm not sure why, but I'm glad to say that I'm still loving the show without all the stylization. Moving on to the performances, I'm not going to run through them all like I have before, and that's because I really have nothing new to say, which is a good thing. The entire cast continues to be great in their roles. I really have no issues with any of them. Both of the newcomers who played Aisha and Najma were great additions. It's kind of a relief to be able to say wholeheartedly that there's not a bad performance in the bunch, especially coming off of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is the show I loved, but definitely had a wide range in the quality of performances. I also just want to quickly mention the score of this show. It's really good. It really enhances every scene greatly and just really, really works. I'm noticing it. I'm loving it. Also, the soundtrack is fantastic. Next up, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to kind of run through and recap the plot of this episode. Since a lot happened that I wanted to go through, uh, we start off with this really interesting flashback to British-occupied India in 1942. We finally get some answers. Najma, Kamran's mom, and Aisha, uh, Kamala's great-grandma, are looking for the two bangles to return back to their dimension. And they get interrupted. They find one bangle on what I believe could be a Cree arm. That's a very cool detail. Also, the floor they're standing on had the Ten Rings logo on it. I'm very curious to see how all those things connect. The British come and Najma and Aisha are separated. That's the last time they ever saw each other. We flash back to the present and Najma is kind of explaining this all to Kamala in a big exposition dump. Najma, Aisha, and the others are Jin, called the clandestine, who were exiled from their dimension. They draw power from the Noor, which means light. It's what powers the Bengals. It's what keeps the Jin young. They ask Kamala for help. Uh, they want to return to their universe. She agrees to help them. All of this was a solid opening. We get lots of answers, lots of lore building, but also lots more questions. I still think we have a lot to learn about these Jin and why they were exiled, especially. I'm going to need a lot more information before I judge them and I judge this whole plot because I'm not sure yet how I feel about it. It's not fully developed yet, so I'm holding out judgment until we get more. Bruno agrees to help Kamala using research papers by Eric Selvig, which was a cool little reference. It's a little convenient, yeah, but I'll accept it. We see damage control entering the mosque, searching for Kamala, uh, which I really liked. Uh, so far, I much prefer damage control as villains than the Jin. That may change in the future. Nakia shuts them down as a new member of the mosque board. We see Nakia visiting Kamala and revealing that she won the election. I'm really liking the pacing of this show. Everything is happening very quickly, but it works. This conversation was great. Just a genuine moment between friends, and that's where the episode worked the best. Uh, the episode really shined in the character conversations. Next up is the party before Amir's wedding. There's a nice conversation with Kamala and her mother about uh, her dislike, her mother's dislike of this new superhero, Nightlight. This also establishes why Kamala feels like she can't tell her parents about her secret identity, which will come back up later. All of that was great. The first episode of this season was kind of about the dream of being a superhero, that idealized life that Kamala fantasizes about. The second episode is about that life actually happening and coming true and Kamala living her dream and having fun with it. And then this episode is where she finally has to deal with the downsides and the harsh realities of being a superhero. Uh, we see that when Kamala is having doubts, she talks with the head of the mosque. She reveals that she thinks that she's just making things worse. He kind of reaffirms her beliefs as he tells her that Nightlight is doing good. She saved that one kid's life. He tells her that good is not a thing you are, but a thing you do, which is a fantastic line. And then Kamala sees the mask Bruno made for her and smiles. Her doubts have kind of dissipated, at least for now, which was a really beautifully written, well-acted scene. Uh, great character development, and it really adds to uh, Kamala's character arc. Kamala's dad helps Bruno with his research on the djinn. Uh, helps reveal that they're not what they seem. Maybe they were exiled for a reason. Bruno tells Kamala that it'll be dangerous to help them back home. They need more time. Solid plot stuff. 
Kamala's back home, has this fantastic conversation with her mom. I really love this conversation because of how universally relatable it is. Kamala's mother talks about her experience as an immigrant, how isolating it was until she found a community of people like her. She tells Kamala that whatever challenge she's facing, she doesn't have to face it alone. It's kind of a bittersweet scene because obviously Kamala is touched, but also you see on her face, she does have to do it alone. She can't just tell her parents about her powers. So that was a great scene. Kamala texts Kamran and asks for more time and he's super nice about it. He says, sure. We get another fantastic conversation scene. Amir is nervous about his wedding. He doesn't have much money. His father tells him that he'll be fine because he has chosen family and he will always have support. Another really fantastic heartfelt scene. We then go into my favorite sequence of the episode, the wedding. I love seeing other cultures in media and this was just really cool to see. We get Amir and his wife saying I do three times, which is a cool tradition I'm unfamiliar with. We then get the dancing, the celebration. I loved all of this. I had a huge grin on my face the entire time. It's just completely joyous and vibrant and full of energy and just so much fun to watch. We live in a really cynical time where things are rarely just purely joyous anymore. So I just really love this. The colors, the music, the dancing, all of it was just awesome and a ton of fun. Moving on, Najma doesn't want to wait. Uh, Kamran goes and warns Kamala, who pulls the fire alarm as the jinn interrupt the wedding. We get an awesome fight scene with some surprisingly well-done fight choreography. I love seeing Kamala using her powers more. I love the entire fight. But of course, the thing that brings it to a whole other level is the music. Using Living on a Prayer was absolutely perfect and elevated the entire sequence. That was awesome. Uh, Najma comes in. They have a shared vision of uh, of the train, which says Karachi on it. Damage control comes in, saves the day. They arrest the Jin as Kamala escapes. Uh, that was a great ending to the fight. I wasn't expecting it at all, but I like damage control coming in. We see Nakia kind of confronts Kamala, and Kamala promises to explain everything later. She goes home. Her parents ask her to just tell the truth. You can see that she really wants to, but she feels like she can't. Her parents are disappointed. Again, another really great scene. Finally, we end with Kamala on the phone with her grandma, who has had the same vision of the train, wants her to come to Karachi. That was a great ending. I'm excited to see where that goes next episode. Also, I wanted to point out that in the credits, you can spot a truck driving by with Trust a Bro on it. That's a great little Hawkeye Easter egg that I love. But that concludes my kind of recap of the plot. I'm really happy with everything that happened from a character and story perspective. Those conversation scenes and then the dance, uh, the wedding celebration was definitely the best part of the episode. I'm very excited to see where the story goes next episode. That's pretty much all I have to say about this episode. I loved it. Can't wait for more. And what did you think of it? Did you like it as much as me? What's your favorite episode so far? Let me know in the comments, email, voicemail, or form. And all those links are in the description. So thank you so much for listening and have a good day.